So this question is a diagram question. We see our histograms provided here, separated by two uh, data sets. We have data set A and data set B. The question says two data sets of 23 integers. Okay, so that's important to know. Each are summarized in the histogram shown. For each of the histograms, the first interval represents the frequency of integers greater than or equal to 10, but less than 20. Okay, so that's this interval here. So everything in there is somewhere between 10 and 19. And same for here. Everything in here is between 10 and 19. All right, and just to be more specific, for data set A, there isn't anything in that range of values, right? It, does have, it doesn't have any data points between 10 and 19. But for data set B, we have three, right? So I'll be able to read this because the vertical axis, this will be three. There are three values between 10 and 19, okay? Um, then it goes on to say the second interval represents the frequency of integers greater than or equal to 20, but less than 30, right? So we just continue on. So that'd be 20 to 29, here would be 30 to 39, 40 to 49, 50 to 59, and that would, of course, be applicable for both of our histograms. What is the smallest possible difference between the mean of data set A and the mean of data set B? All right, so what, first of all, what is the difference between how these data sets are even set up? It looks like um, data set B looks a lot like data set A, but it's just been shifted to the left by one space, right? So in essence, we already pointed out there are zero data points here for data set A, but we do have three here for data set B between 10 and 19. And on the high end, there are nine data points here between 50 and 59 for data set A, but there are no data points here for data set B between 50 and 59. So our expectation is that the mean of data set B will be lower, right? So B in terms of mean, if we were to do the math, the mean of data set B would be less than the mean of data set A. So how do I use that information to my, to my advantage to figure out the smallest possible difference between the mean of data set A and the mean of data set B? Well, I think because I know that B's data is smaller than A, I'm going to try to make A as small as I can, right? I'm going to try to find what's the lowest possible mean for data set A, um, and then I'm going to try to make B as big as it can, right? And in essence, I'm trying to find where these two guys like come together and, and match somewhere in the middle. It may not be congruent, so I shouldn't use that symbol there, but that's that's the goal. I'm trying to squeeze. I want to I want to squeeze the two means together, basically. So what does that mean for us? For data set A, that means when I look at these three values inside of here. I'm going to pretend as if all three of them are 29, right? Because I want to get A, I'm sorry, I'm going to pretend as if all three of them are 20. So I want A to be as low as possible. So I'm going to say, well, that's acting as if all three of them are 20. That means the sum of the data points in there is 60. And then for this next bar, to be as low as it possibly can for data set A, that will make all four of those data points equal to 30. So it will be 30 times 4, which is 120. We do the exact same thing here. That'd be 40 times 7, which is 280. And then lastly, that would be 50 times 9. That is 450. I'm going to add up all these values together in my calculator. 60 plus 120 plus 280 plus 450. I get 910. And then because I know I have 23 integers or 23 data points, I divide that by 23 to actually find the average, and it's 39.6. So there's my mean. That is the lowest possible mean, right? It could be greater than this, so just keep that in mind um, in case we're wrong about this process. It could be greater than 39.6 because this 39.6 is based upon using the smallest possible values here from data set A. I'm going to do the exact same thing with data set B, but instead I'm going to use the largest possible values for data set B, again, trying to squeeze my means together. So for this first bunch here, that's going to be 19 times 3, right? Because 19 is the largest possible number in that bar, and 19 times 3 is 57. For here, that would be 29 times 4, which is 116. And for here, this would be 39 times 7, right? 7. 
So 39 times 7, which is 273. And for here, that would be 49 times 9, which is 441. And again, I add up all my values here. So 441 plus 273 plus 116 plus 57 is equal to 887. So pretty close to 910. Then I divide that by 23 because there's 23 integers and I get 38.6. Okay, so that's the highest possible mean value for data set B. Could be lower, uh, but that's our highest possible. And that difference is just a difference of one. Now, what that tells me for sure is that C and D cannot be right because those are larger than one. I'm pretty certain that one is the correct answer, but realistically, I'd have to probably find the range of values for each of these data sets to be able to tell that zero is not an option. Um, but given the amount of time that's been taken on this question, I probably would not do that until I finish the test, right? which is just one question away. But just to make sure you understand what I mean by that, it means that <clears throat> While I, ch while I chose 20 here, I know that these values really are between 20 and 29. So I could say, well, this could go all the way up to 29 times 3, which is 87. Which means that first range of sums from that data point, from, the, from that first bar in data set A is between 60 and 87. Right, and I can just keep doing that. Right, this would be 39 times 4, this would be 49 times 7 instead of 40 times 7, 59 times 9. And I get, I'd get some larger, of course, I'd get a larger um, mean when I use these larger numbers here. Now, now that I'm thinking about that, that makes me much more confident in my answer actually, because I'm going to get a, lar a number larger than 39.6 here in terms of my range. But here, I would get a number smaller than, right? Because I, I chose the largest numbers for data set B. So the, if I were to do the range for data set B, I'd get a number smaller than 38.6. So there isn't going to be any overlap. This is the largest that um, data set B can get to. This is the smallest that data set A can get to. So in essence, right, if I were on a number line and this were 38.6, and this were 39.6. The range of values for uh, data set B, 38.6 and below, they would go this way. This would be B. But the range of values for data set A are 39.6 and greater. It would go this way. Right? So there's definitely no overlap here. And therefore, the difference here of there being one unit, answer choice B, must be correct.